The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to, uh, hey, it is Halloween. It's October 31st. Trick or treat out there. Hey, this is going to be a show full of treats. Of course, the uh, best treat would be to hear from you. So welcome to today's uh, October 31st. Terrific Thursday. It's Trader Edge Edition. Uh, I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everybody out there is having a great day. Let's make sure that we have an extraordinary one. So let's go ahead and get this show started. Of course, I'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. That's the number to dial in. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading of that email, please put radio show question. Of course, our Tiger's Den any ping will do. And yes, Peter, the uh, Nationals, that must have been a great celebration. Amazing. Their stadium was uh, full outside the stadium. I'm talking in D.C., not Houston out there. So some good fans and a heck of a World Series, kind of a dream World Series, at least with regard to Game 7. And, uh, you know, two Cy Young Award uh, winning uh, pitchers. Uh, out there. So uh, in any event, let's go ahead and get this uh, show started on terrific uh, Thursday. Uh, currently, we've got the uh, Dow down about 211 points. S&P. So all the indices are in the uh, red. Now it's the spot volatility index that's in the green by 10.79%. It's going to be an end of day reading. But here's the drill. You already know the drill. If you're a longtime listener, you really know the drill. And that is if you see a one day rate of change that is greater than 10%, in the spot volatility index, you should anticipate, you should expect, you should be watching for a bounce, at least a bounce. It's called a bounce or a bottom. Now, you'll look for some type of short-term pattern uh, when that would begin out there. That's how you kind of put that together. But it's going to be an end-of-day reading. Now, you've got gold trading out at 151250 That's up $15.80. Peter, that's trading right into the resistance of the top of its profile. So here's the deal. Nice dollar move out there, but nothing more than a counter-trend move. A counter trend move right into resistance. The top of that daily profile is 151340 out there. And you can see that price also a couple days ago, a handful of days ago, tagged the center of the weekly profile at 1520. So price would need to close above 1520 in order for uh, gold to suggest maybe a breakout or something along those lines. But so far, just a counter trend rally inside of Goldilocks. You've got silver up 15 pennies. She's trading out at 1802. Light sweet crude off 90 cents, trading at 54.17. Natural gas off a nickel. Uh, you got the 30 year treasury up one, almost two points out here, one and 24 30 seconds. Trading out at 161 11. There is a new profile inside of the 30 year treasury as well. Now, leading the charge dollar wise to the upside, it is Lending Tree Inc. It's up 38 bucks, 12 percent. A universal display. We had a call around that yesterday. OLED is a ticker symbol. Uh, I can't recall what I had suggested. I think when we took a look at that, we said there's no reason to exit that position, but we didn't have have a solid bottom. That seemed to be my recollection, but I could be totally wrong about that. ABMD is a ticker symbol. We haven't seen that for a while. That's up 11.5% or 21 bucks. Murphy USA, $18. Teleflex is up 17. Don't know who they are, but they're up 5%. Now, to the downside, it's the old GMAC. It's the World Acceptance Corp, uh, WRLD, off 30 bucks or 23%. Alamo Group down 25 bucks, 19%. Mercado Libre off 19. Wayfair, 17. Wex Inc., 15. So plenty to look at, but I want to look at what you 
want to look at. No questions thus far that have come in. So let's simply go take a tour around these uh, markets out here. Uh, I see John in the Tiger's Den uh, mentioning uh, perigee and what he's referring to, folks. If we take a look at the move to the downside, if you take a look at these four panels out here, you're going to see the ES Mini. You're going to see 30-minute time frame charts, by the way, the ES Mini, the NQ. The Dow is in the lower left and the Russell in the lower right. Now, all my work, and it was a lot of work, um, many, many years ago, uh, just dealt with the ES Mini out there. But we have found over time, uh, through others using this uh, tool, John and Tiger's Den, he uses it for gold as well as other things, uh, uh, that uh, you can expand it to more than just the uh, ES Mini out there. If you take a look at what price has done so far inside the ES Mini, it's pulled right back to support. Support being that perigee pivot. Now, perigee is the lunar aspect when the moon is closest to Earth during the current current lunar cycle. Now, that came in over the weekend. I believe it was on Saturday. And when it comes in over the weekend, uh, what we have to do is use either Friday's close or Sunday's open. That's why you see two different lines out here. Until they get tested, I don't really know which one is support and or resistance. Now, based upon the uh, based upon the way I take a look at the NQ right now and then the ES it looks like it was Friday's close in the NQ that's 80 36 50 inside the ES mini it's 30 20 even Steven out there you can see that the Dow is or was trading right below that perigee pivot it closed below it for one 30 minute bar the Russell 2000 for more than that's so the Russell 2000 is one that looks to be in grave peril out there but you know we'll have to take a look at it but right now, here's what you know. Here's what I know. Price has pulled back to a key level of support. So do not back up that truck of yours. And if you are an intraday trader, uh, you could learn from uh, John out here. He went ahead and covered that ES Mini short, seeing that perigee pivot point hold. Of course, he would jump on that uh, train to the downside. If you saw a close, we'll have to say below 3020 out there. Um, so, so the markets, if we just take a look at uh, a, a extraordinary tool, I can't tell you why it works, not because I can't tell you, just because I can't tell you. I sort of know, but I don't want to put out the conspiracy theory as to why it does or it doesn't work. The most important thing for you to know is that it does work. And it's a great tool, and you, I, don't think you, there's, I don't think you can find it anywhere else out there. I believe I was the Christopher Columbus of Perigee and Apogee, but that was looking at all of the lunar and celestial aspects that I could find because I did take 300 years worth of data from the New American Femoris. Uh, of course, I, I, I and I, I can only test like 100 years. That means I've got a couple hundred years going forward with all those points. And I tested the Pesavento index points. Uh, I've tested every type of, of uh, celestial to try to see if there was some consistent that could be used by you and I to find an edge. This is, of course, called the Trader's Edge Show, and I couldn't find it, but I did find it. It was this right here. This is the most reliable tool to help you understand long or short out there. Okay, enough of that, but we do know that prices pulled back to support out here. Now, if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, and we're just kind of surfing around the markets, I believe we were talking about the fact that on a closing basis, the NYSE was making higher highs in the face of a declining tops pattern inside the advanced decline oscillator. Now, the advanced decline oscillator right now is down at minus 20, so it's below zero. When you get below zero, it tells you that sellers are in control. Now, it's an end-of-day reading. I don't know what the end-of-day reading will be. However, there's a little hitch here. That hitch is you've got to see a second day's close below zero. The first day's close below zero or above zero, depending on where you're coming from, could be a false signal. But right now, the signal says, okay, you've got sellers in control. Yet the New York Stock Exchange will not get rocking and rolling until that 50-day exponential moving average of the spot volatility index is exceeding 1543. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So uh, I've got a question here from uh, from Sat Sat P says, "Can we take a look at the uh, SOXS?" And uh, let me know if you see any bottom in that. So if we're going to take a look at that, what we really want to do is let me switch over the charts. Is actually take a look at the, the the indice chart out here. So give me just a moment to switch over. I want to take a look at the semiconductor index versus taking a look at a double or triple. ETF out there and trying to understand if there's a top or a bottom and so forth. So now where where did I put it? Okay, here we go. So if we take a look at the semiconductor index, this is Stevie's uh, set of charts out here, his Ninja Trader charts. Uh, what we know is there there may be still there still may be an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway, and uh, so I believe SOXS is the short. Uh, of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and analyze uh, for you the actual indice, and then you go ahead and make your decisions about what you want to do from there. So there's the A to B equal CD pattern, a potential pattern. Uh, now, it may have actually completed. So what I mean by that is if you take a look at the A to B equal CD on my chart, it gives you a price projection of 1716. A couple of days ago, the actual high was 1691. So you're about, what, uh, uh, 24 points or so away from hitting that. But we use this as a guideline uh, more so than a, uh, hey, it's got to hit the number exactly. And the reason why it may be complete was because two days ago we had the bearish engulfing candle. That could confirm that sell the D point. Now, whether we do or whether we don't, Sat, here's what we know. We know that price is pulled back and is testing Stevie's green line.
And if price doesn't close below Stevie's green line, then the only thing that we can do, well, we can do anything we want, but what I would suggest that we do is say that so far this has been nothing more than a retracement. That doesn't mean that tomorrow there can't be a different signal, but we have to go with today's signals out here. So as Basil likes to teach us, uh, when you get to that wave number four, letter D, uh, the market usually does something else. Well, if it's doing something else, that something else was just simply pulling back and testing support. Stevie's green line, which is right around the 1643, uh, 1642 area out here. Uh, so uh, this still suggests that uh, this could be a buy the dip point for the uh, semis, which I think is the opposite of what you were looking for. But I can't I can't say for sure because I don't know. Maybe you're in the SO access. But right now, all price is done is tagged support out here. So I hope that helps you out with regard to our my analysis. If we take a look at the next uh, request that comes in, it's from Ray K. He says, thanks. I understand you are busy. Well, not that. Oh, OK. He's just simply referring to an email that I got back. Let me see here. I'm waiting. This is I'm waiting. Uh, okay, that's just really just a follow up to to a prior email, so no problem there, and and you don't need me to read that. But we do have a question coming in from Nick A. Nick wants to uh, take a look at the Dow and the DAX and tell me what we see out here. So let's go take a look at the Dow. I don't have a chart for the DAX up, but we can remedy that situation, I'm sure. But if we go take a look at the Dow, so the Dow is weaker then uh, well it's, it's it's kind of one of the weaker it, it's it's weaker than the s p and the nasdaq of course you probably didn't need me to tell you that but i did and i did and so i will and i've done it now if we go take a look at the dow one of the things that we want to uh, start with here nick is take a look at the uh, equity futures contract so as we take a look at it uh, we can see that price has gotten back inside its daily profile, the top of which is 27.042, not even down to the center of the box yet, 26.744. So we just have kind of like a uh, just a normal pullback at this stage of the game. Now, price yesterday pretty much ran up to a descending tops line out here, Nick. That descending tops line starting from about July 16th as your first high and your second high on September the 13th out there. Now, each of the other, when I see each of the other, I'm really referring to the ES Mini and the NQ, they used to have those declining tops patterns in play, uh, but uh, they didn't give a darn. They just simply cruised through it. So the, the Dow right now is... Um, Hasn't really. When I take a look at Dow Equity Futures contract, no real sell signal or anything here just yet. Now, there's two new profiles out here. And just in case we've got Jay inside the Tiger's Den, he always likes those new profiles. Now, these are new profiles attempting to form. And they happen to be on the ES Mini and the Russell 2000. If you take a look at the Russell 2000 equity futures contract, that is the right-hand panel on my screen, you will see that the bottom of its profile is 1547. So a close below 1547 here, Nick, that might be a signal to you of a change in trend or the Russell 2000 trying to drag some markets lower. But if price does not close below the bottom of its profile, 1547, this was nothing more than your garden variety type of retracement, at least from the daily standpoint. In the case of the ES Mini, it is a pretty much an equal it's not a bearish or bullish structured profile but the top of the new profile may be 3047 now when i say maybe what i mean by nay maybe or attempting to form is i'm using stevie's advanced doppler tools out here so if you happen to have market profiles or task market profiles on your charts you're not getting the same result out here you're going to see the old profiles nothing wrong with that this is a new profile trying to form inside the es mini the top of the box out there is 3047. The center is 3025. It's right where we're trading right now. And the bottom is going to be 2996. So for those of you that are looking for some type of change in trend, your confirmation would likely come, would likely come with closes below the bottom of those profiles. We haven't even mentioned the NQ, which is still trading above the top of its daily profile and trading right on the weekly profile, which is, uh, what, it's 8071. We're trading at 8070 basically right now. So that's first from a profile standpoint. If we take a look at the Dow's, Dow Jones cash indice chart out here, and we pull this up, what you're going to see is price right now is also sitting right at support. It's approximately, it's just slightly below steep 
TV's green line out there. Um, we do know that the uh, Dow Jones cash indice, let me get rid of that Gartley bipedal because price has basically made that measured move, 100% move of a move. The Dow has gotten up towards that resistance, breakdown resistance at 27.272 and 27.281. Those are the key numbers that if price were to close above, it's telling you about a upward move likely to last through uh, November, maybe even through all of December out there. We're not there yet. There is a pullback or a retracement that is underway. But so far, what we see inside the Dow is nothing more than a pullback to some support levels out here. Um, that's what I see when I take a look at it, uh, Nick. Uh, now, you asked about the DAX. So let me do this here. Give me a moment to switch over to my other set of charts. Let me try to uh, grab the uh, DAX out here. Let's do this here together. Although I did put the SOXF, SOXS out there. And the question that came in, you know, do I see a bottom or something like that? I don't have a bottom signal there. But again, you want to rely upon the index, not this triple ETF out here. So the DAX, let's go see if we can... Uh, uh, can add the DAX chart here, and hopefully it gives me the update through today's close. But let's go check that out. I don't know if it did, but we're going to find out here momentarily. We had the DAX close. Uh, down 43 points, 12,866 was the number. So, no, I don't have I don't have uh, today's data hasn't been updated yet. 12,866 is the number, but 12,866 looks like it closed below Stevie's red line. Hey, don't pay attention to these profiles out here. I, I won't guarantee you that they work. But the question is, is there a, a topping pattern out here inside the DAX? The answer is no. There's an A to B equals CD pattern. That is underway. Hey, we'll be right back. We're going to a hard break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Whoa. What the heck happened there? Hmm. I lost, I think, sound. Bowser. There we go. Good here. You got me? Okay, let me share my screen here again. So we've got that under control. Start sharing. Okay, we should be good to go. Sorry about that. So look, let's just finish off Nick's question here with regard to the uh, DAX because we were going into the uh, break. And what we know about the DAX out here is that uh, there is an A to B equal CD with its price projection 1-1. One one price projection in the 13109 area. I don't see any of their topping pattern or signal. No bearish reversal candle, even though I don't have uh, today's, although it looks like maybe today's is updated now. Um, and so it looks like uh, this is nothing more than a retracement there. I don't have anything on the longer term timeframes, longer term timeframes, for example, the weekly chart. If we look at the weekly chart out here, folks of the DAX, um, no pattern to speak of that I can see. We'll need to just check out the wave count. Let's see where we're at from the uh, bottom back here. This is a monthly, a weekly chart. It says weekly. Okay, weekly chart. No, I don't really have a bottoming. Uh, I don't have a topping pattern or signal inside the DAX on a weekly basis. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart here for the uh, DAX, uh, there's really nothing wrong. And prices above Stevie's uh, green line there at 12379 So at this stage, of the uh, game, uh, Nick, and that's as of 1.32 in the afternoon. We're going to have to go with just, just nothing more than your basic garden variety kind of retracement out there. Now, that really bleeds into a couple of questions presented in Tiger's Den. And uh, so we're going to work walk through this together. The first question coming in from uh, Joe, he says, Steve, do you think the market will be in the normal bullish seasonal period soon? Or uh, or like uh, last year, or or do like last year and go down into the end of the year. What do your tools say? And then uh, John in the Tiger's Den is asking the question. So long as the S&P pullback holds the 3,000 level, the March, uh, higher into the uh, end of the year, such as was in 2013, seems likely. So I don't know if that's a question or a statement out there. It doesn't matter. Let's just simply go take a look at it. Now, with regard to answering the question about the seasonal cycle, at this stage of the game, and, and because I'm totally upgrading my system and computers and everything, I don't have all of my files and tools on my new computer yet. So I can't show you um, I, I can't show you what I'd, what I'd like to show you, which was an analysis that I had done a couple of weeks ago. I did it for uh, Tom's, uh, one of Tom's segments out there where we looked at the seasonal cycle, the favorable seasonal cycle. Uh, and what I did was uh, I, used the, I used the Dow Equity Futures contracts to assist us with making that call. Now, typically the cycle occurs, if you take a look at the last 80 years, right around October 13th. But we don't have to use that date, and we should not use that date as our uh, signal. Um, uh, we, instead, we look for other patterns out here. Now, John in the Tiger's Den had mentioned 2013. If I could show you 2013, there's a possibility that I can. Give me a second here to do this. Hopefully, I don't screw everything up and get us kicked off the uh, air, so to speak. Uh, maybe I need about, I don't know, 15,000 days. Let me see here. We're going to see if we can do this because this is how we kind of segue and tie it all together uh, and what we're going to take a look at in a similarity. So so one thing, um, one thing that uh, John, I know, has done is he's taken a look at the calendar year, this calendar year versus 2013. So let's see if we can get back to 2013 out here. Here we go. We're in 2013. Let me get my cursor going. And in 2013, around the, uh, I think it was August, but I can't recall for sure, out here. Uh, yeah, so there was a, there was a, oh, I know what else I've got to do. Hold on. 
So I can't really show you this unless I turn those tools on that are going to allow us to do that. So I've got to come back to my setup nine count and put in all the lines that I can. So we're going to go ahead for patterns and lines to keep unlimited. And we're going to see that hopefully populate here momentarily. And when it does, it will kind of tell us the picture out here. So hopefully this does this. There we go. Perfect. So we're still, I believe, in 2013. But let me make – what the heck? Oh, I said okay. Okay. Uh, that's just uh, I'm talking to my computer, not you. Sorry about that uh, out there if you're listening. So when I say okay, I was really referring to my computer. And yeah, I knew, okay, so here we are. So we're in 2013. So here's what I want you, want everybody to take a look at. The Dow actually formed a, a TD setup nine count. It formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom back in August of 2013. And in doing so, what it did was it formed a TD setup nine count. Now, what that nine count does to the upside, it completed on September 13, 2013. What it did was it set up a breakout level. So back in the October time frame, this happened to be October the 8th and October the 9th, price had pulled back into support. Support was the breakout level. The very one of the very first things that I was taught by Tom was that uh, when something is breaking out, don't buy that breakout. Instead, have patience and wait for price to pull back to the breakout level. Now, there's a couple different ways. This is a new tool to be able to take a look at where the breakout levels are. It's an extraordinary tool, having d watched it work uh, as you and I do. But but so here's the deal. Here's the deal. Price pulled right back into October 8th and 9th in 2013, right back to that support level. And voila, price moved higher in through the end of the year. The actual high was formed right around January, uh, December 31st. That was the high. And then with the market experienced, Joe, Trader Joe, you're asking me about the seasonality here. If I were to put in my 86-year cycle, you would see that the Dow... This is we're looking at Dow futures, typically tops in the early part of January. Well, December 31st for me qualifies as January, pulls back into the end of the month. And the end of the month, in this case here, was a TD setup nine count that was on February 3rd. That set off that next bottom out there. So now to help answer your question. Everybody got that? You can see that. You can see what was going on in 2013. Now we fast forward to where we're at. Here, in this case here, the Dow goes ahead and makes a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. The actual confirmation of that bottom came on August 28th when there was a bullish reversal candle. That was your bull sash candle, and it closed above Stevie's red line. Shortly after that, what the uh, YM did was it made a TD setup nine count. What that TD setup nine count did, again, was created the breakout support level. That was at 25,910. Now, this is the real important thing here. First, this replicates what we just took a look at in 2013 only do 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 it's uh it's uh 2019 in this case here the test of that breakout level was on october 3rd you kind of see this trader joe you see this john out here you see this everybody out here so if where john was the first that i know of to say hey 2013 looks a lot like 2019 and that was without john knowing this it looks a lot more like 2013 than you could even possibly know and so, yes, there is a real possibility here that that seasonal low has been put in. We cannot discount it, a la 2013. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
that same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, Dow, trying to answer a couple of questions out there. It segues into Wayne's question here as well. Plus, I wanted to respond. So, so Joe, what I, so the chart patterns that we're looking at absolutely emulate what we just took a look at in 2013. Whether it's 2013 or not doesn't really matter. Uh, but we can find a reason for a valid bottom in the seasonal favorable seasonal cycle. But look, the reality is this. The reality is that uh, the markets are still in a consolidation pattern. Now, I'm going to come back to this, and we'll get to these. To, to, to uh, Wayne, I'll get to your, your question out here. Uh, of course, I need to find this, uh, this uh, set of charts out there. Where, where did I put it? It should be around here close. Oh, man, where did I put it? Um, give me a moment just to try to find that. It more easily makes the point. And if I can't find it, I can't find it. Here we go. Always right in front of you. So here's your here's your monthly time frame charts for the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, Russell 2000. And the, the markets are really still in their consolidation, Joe. And so when you're in a consolidation, to me, that's priority. That is priority uh, versus, hey, we're in this favorable seasonal cycle out here. And in a consolidation pattern, boy, you've really got to be nimble. You've really got to be paying attention to the signals for different time frames out here. And so one of those time frames would certainly be the daily. And just like we could find that bottom in an emulation of 2013, as we speak right now, if the market closes, you've got a valid sell the D point inside the Dow Equity Futures contract because you have a bearish engulfing candle to 1 to 1.272A to B equals CD to the upside. And so how are we going to manage this and understand what the markets are telling us? Well, there's a couple different ways. One of the ways that we'll take a look at it is going back to those profiles. So let me just flip back here. We pay attention to the bottom of the profiles out here. By the way, for the 
Dow. It's 26506. You must see a close below that to at least signal to you and I that there is a change in trend. Well, what else can we take a look at? Well, Wayne was asking about the spot volatility index and the SPY. And to answer the SPY, we'll probably take a look at the ES Mini out here. Maybe we'll take a look at the S&P 500. But with regard to the spot volatility index, the other thing that we will know out here is the following. Let's come out here. Um, you know, I used to have a beautiful chart that would tell us. So let me come back to the New York Stock Exchange chart out here. When the, when the spot volatility index, that's the bottom portion of our panel out here, uh, Wayne, Joe, when it is trading above the 50-day exponential moving average, that's when price really starts to rock and roll to the downside. When price is below the 50-day exponential moving average, such as it is right now, the 50 days at 1544, the spot VIX is at 1368 out there, it doesn't have the bearish setup. It just has kind of like a pullback, retracement. No matter how deep it is, it's still just a retracement. And go back and take a look at your charts. And just generally speaking, take a look at the direction of price when the spot volatility index is above the 50 versus below the 50. And you'll really see what it is that I mean. So another way, Wayne, another way, Joe, another way, John, that we'll know um, we'll know if there is actually more downside actions by paying attention to that tool. And right now that tool says, you know, not so fast out there. That's what that tool is telling us. Likewise, when we began the show, we were noticing that the spot volatility index was up by over 10%. I don't know where it's at right now, but let's just simply go take a look at um, where is the chart that we need. It's right here. Uh, and as we expand this chart, yeah, it's up 11% out here. Now, what this chart is uh, showing us is it's showing us days where the spot volatility index is a one-day rate of change greater than 10%. Those are blue arrows. Green arrows are when the spot volatility index has a one-day rate of change below minus 10% out there. They typically are conviction moves or acceleration moves or initiation moves to upside price. Last time we had one of those signals was right here on the trading day. This is an upside signal on October the 11th when the spot volatility index was down by 11.33%. Right now we're up by 10.79%. Now on those blue arrows, what you typically see, not always, but what you typically see is some type of bounce or bottom that forms out here. Now we're just at the highs, um, but nonetheless, you should pay attention with that one day rate of change. If it is greater than 10%, you should be anticipating, expecting at least a bounce overnight. You see it on a 30 minute time frame chart out there so with regard to um how are we going to manage this stuff uh, going forward to understand if the seasonality has kicked in we're going to watch the spot volatility index we're going to watch those market profiles we're going to watch those breakout levels and certainly we're going to pay attention to market breadth we haven't even talked about market breadth. So in the case, Wayne was asking about the S the spies. And I said, well, we're going to look at the S&P 500. But we really are going to look at the S&P 500 by taking a look at the market breadth. Now, when things are going to get moving to the downside, John, Wayne, Joe, what we will see is a bearish crossover. A bearish crossover is when the red line on this chart, you're looking at just the upper panel, is above the green line. What's the red line? What's the green line? Well, the red line tells you the number of instruments inside the S&P 500 that are trading below support. In this case here, support would be the bottom of its TAS market profile. Green line represents the opposite. Those instruments trading above the top of their daily profile. This is a daily time frame that we are looking at. Right now, the score is in the bottom of the ninth. It's 161 to 113. Bulls are still in control. If the bears are going to be in control of the S&P 500 or the SPY, and we could also use that spot volatility index, we're going to see a bearish crossover. We're going to see the spot volatility index above the 50-day exponential moving average, and we're also going to see key levels of support failing out there. It is that simple. Now, of course, it depends on the time frame trader that you are. This is the daily time frame. If you were a short term time frame, short term time frame trader out there, you'd want to take a look at, hey, what's the signal on a 60 minute basis? So you get a you got a crossover. You got a crossover at nine o'clock this morning on the uh, 60 minute time frame. That was to suggest that sellers are in control. If we take a look at the ES mini on the 60 minute time frame, try to figure because this is not going to be an advanced tool out here. This is going to be a momentum type tool out here. 
here. And what we can see is you got nice big old bottom hammer candle. So on the 60 minute time frame chart, as price was pushing lower, let me get my cursor out here. Price was doing what? It was testing support. Support of what? Support of the bottom of its daily profile. Now we did see a close below. That was, by the way, at 11 o'clock. Now at one o'clock, you got to TD bar number eight. And it looks like we're going to have a TD set up nine count pattern. But it's not the type of nine count pattern that Stevie likes to see in order to call it a bottom. For that, we need to see bar nine or the bar following nine at this stage. Could have been bar eight, but that's not the case. Be below bar number six. What's the price point of bar number six? Bar number six low out there is 3020.25 out here. Um, so if we do get a valid TD setup nine count out here on the 60 minute time frame chart, okay, that's something to pay attention to. The 30 minute time frame chart, if I put this out here, um, what did the 30 minute time frame chart do? Let me see here. The 30 minute time frame chart actually last half hour, so as we came into 130, was confirming a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. A pattern was confirmed. The ES mini on a 30 minute basis closes above 3030. Expect to run up to 3037 at a minimum. See roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to finish the uh, finish the uh, day off here by taking a look at the ES Mini. That way, I'll be able to answer the uh, question for Wayne about the uh, spy. And and here's really the conundrum. The conundrum is we have, as, at least as of 1:54 in the afternoon, we have both bearish and bullish signals out here. And really, what that should do is kind of keep in a neutral stance. Now, what do I mean, bullish and bearish? Well, first on my chart here for the daily time frame for the ES Mini, you're going to see a black A to B equals CD pattern. That has not been fulfilled. That price projection is 3105. That would be the one-to-one -one area. So we're going to take that off the screen right now. Left on the screen is the smaller A to B equals CD pattern. Those are the red lines. This morning, yesterday, what the uh, ES Mini did was it got up to the 1.6 when it expansion of that C to D leg. That means you take the A to B leg, which was from 28.55 to 29.59. You take that price difference, multiply it times 1.618. That value you would add to the C point that was at 28.81. That gives you your price projection of 30.50. Whew, that was a mouthful. Now, today's candle thus far is a bearish engulfing candle, which would confirm the A to B equals CD pattern. However, that's the bearish. Let's take a look at the bullish case. The bullish case is, so far, as of 155 in the afternoon, all that the ES Mini did was come down and test Stevie's oscillator unchanged line. That is my green line. That is priced at 3019. I developed this tool specifically, specifically to be able to assist me with understanding pullbacks and where pullbacks just simply nothing more than a normal retracement, tests of some type of support out here. And boy, this tool is worth its weight in green and red, in gold. This is the daily time frame chart. And so we have both a bearish pattern, that's the A to B equals CD, and right now a bearish engulfing candle. But we also have a bullish pattern. If you're wondering where the buying the dipsters come from, it's at 3019. It's called Stevie's Green Line. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Two great hours coming up left. Uh, coming up next. David White, he's back. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 4. And I'll be back with you on Fantastic Friday. Have a terrific treat on Trick or Treat Thursday. Take care, folks.